So the, bleh. <laughs> I just tried to say the other day, and it came out like, bleh. Well, you heard it. You were here. The other day I was uh, talking about the guy falling from the building on 9-11, that photo of the guy falling in the air, and how, like, stage, like, the whole thing just, you know, that whole thing was a ritual, you know, it, it was a spell, you know, spellcraft. So he's falling from the sky there, but he's in the hangman position, um, which is the card, the um, tarot card of the hangman. And I didn't know what it, what, what it means, uh, but I, I recognized the the position he was in. So the next day, I'm over at Ross and uh, over in the like the book area and they have a, a deck of tarot cards. Like how often do you see that just like sitting there by itself? And so I just assumed well this is for me. And um, turns out that card um, means to sacrifice something now or something greater in the future. So I was kind of close to what I thought it was. Um, you know, showing like uh, the completion of, of a sacrifice, which is what that, that thing was. And that, that it's made for uh, a gain in the future of some kind. Just thought that was interesting. I'm not trying to summon Carl out here. I, I don't feel like editing him in. Um, it makes just the video so much longer. But um, he'll be back. He's always around. And I was talking about um, another thing I was thinking of I want to mention too is uh, I was talking about Charles Carroll, the comedian. He was part of that, uh, the MDE crew, Million Dollar Extreme. Um, there's a clip channel that clips uh, parts of his longer streams. And I was, uh, I was talking a little bit about it, saying how he discusses a lot of the, the same stuff that I talk about here. And like a lot of other people, I, I see more recently, uh, this, not only the same subjects, but pretty much the same conclusions. You know, we're all reaching these same conclusions. Um, people all over the, the world who don't know each other, are all kind of seeing the same thing. It's pattern recognition, you know? And uh, it's a skill... I'm sorry, I had a... flies around me. Uh, it's a skill that, like... you can kind of... if you start using it... Uh, you can get good at it... exponentially. Like, you don't go up one level... like, you go up in levels of ten. Or at least that's kind of how... I feel it is with me. And sometimes now I look at something... and I can just tell the situation by looking at it. Um, I'm not going to give the Ikea furniture analogy because that was never good. And I always walk into that. I'm not going to do that now, though. But um, the thing I was saying about him was uh, how he just seems to be so caustic. Um, acerbic, I guess. Would that be the right word? I think caustic is better. He just seems pissed off about it. Like he's just had it with the whole thing. Um, and, and I get it. And I was thinking he is that way because I wasn't sure if he had God. Meaning that if he, he recognizes that there is a, a creator, uh, well, Yah, higher being, whatever, uh, however you say it. And indeed he does. Um, he's spirituality pilled. And what he was saying, um, in something I watched this morning before I left, is he was mentioning like spiritual beings like uh, Nephilim, the angels, uh, demonic entities, all those kind of things. He was saying how uh, they're below us, and they really are. Like when the way he put it is on the cosmic spiritual totem pole. There's God, the Father, the Creator, and we're right under that. We're the, the progeny or offspring of that. Um, and all these other things want, want to be you, you know? Uh, wish they were you. And angels 
I've done a little bit about them here. I met two of them. One twice. One, uh, I just kind of was in, an accidental thing. Well, not accidental. It wasn't like a mistake. I didn't, I didn't run them over or anything. But, uh, yeah, I've gone into all the angel stuff in other videos. But the point being, it's like those guys are like, they work for our father. And they're here to kind of help us along when we need them, you know, or to, you know, guide or whatever. But the, um, but they're below us. They're below us. They don't, they don't have what we have. You know, they don't have the, the same power, the same divine power that we have. We're the second most powerful thing. And that's why they have to constantly make you feel like you are shit, you know. Oh, you're nothing. You're just a descendant of uh, monkeys lie spinning around on a on a rock millions of miles an hour it's a lie it's all a lie they have to make this very elaborate uh, lie of an existence of a reality to make you think you're powerless to make you feel powerless to keep you in a fear state depression Despair, anger, like why am I in this position I'm in? And that your life um, has like no meaning to it. Or the thing I love all the time is like, you know, life's what you make it, dude. You know, you just have to kind of, uh, you know, you have to find your own thing that you do. And you have to give it meaning, like that kind of thing they tell you. And that is just, uh, that's more demoralization just disguised as, um, you know, uh, help or, or disguised as uh, as trying to be positive, but it's not, you know, it's not. Everything is geared toward making you think that you're, you're shit, you're nothing, you don't have any power. Which is the opposite, we're, we're number two. We are number two, right under God, you know? And, um, like I used the the example before, it's like we're we're a lion convinced uh, that we're mice by cockroaches. You know? Cause we can't find out. We we can't we can't know what we are. We can't realize if we what we are. If we did, their whole this whole thing would be over. It would be over in a flash. We're way stronger than them. We're way more powerful than them. Or the angels. Or the Nephilim. Or demonic entities. Any of that stuff. Any of that stuff. We're number two. You know? But they can't let you know that. They can't let you have the quiet reflection. That would be required to work that out. And that's why they keep you on the hamster wheel 24-7. You gotta dig gold. You gotta dig gold so that you uh, you have food to put in your mouth and a, and a roof over your head. You gotta stay on that hamster wheel. Keep rolling it, keep rolling it. If you have a family and you gotta support your family and um, you gotta run faster on the hamster wheel. You gotta run on two hamster wheels. You know, like, uh, sometimes I get frustrated with people, you know, and I, I'm like, well, how do they not see this? How do they not know that? How stupid are they? They're not stupid, they're just busy. You know, they're kept busy. And when they're not busy running the hamster wheel, they got bread and circus in their faces 24-7. They'll throw it in your face while you're on the hamster wheel. So when you, you get off the hamster wheel, you go right into that. Or you talk about that, you know, while you're running around circles to produce the gold. And that's, and that's, uh, and they have to do that constantly, 24 seven. It's like, you know, the menagerie has a hole in it when they know we could get out. So they have to like stand in front of the hole doing jumping jacks and screaming, look, look, look.
Because all it takes is enough. Enough awareness. And it's all over. I don't think we've had this opportunity before, though. There's something about... Um, and astrology people probably know what, what it is. That's the, it's part of the stuff that I never... Uh, I don't cover. But... Um, how about Regan from Transforming the Darkness probably knows about this. But it's the end of a cycle that we're coming up on. But it's also the end of an age. And it's the first time this kind of thing has happened. So it's like a unique kind of point in history. Now, I, I think a lot of it is uh, repeats. I think we've been through these, this cycle before. I was talking the other day about how history, uh, the, the lie of history and all the made-up historical figures and the made-up stuff, I think that's just a script that gets uh, used every time there's one of these, like, resets or when they shake the snow globe up. I think they reach a point where they're, they're loose farming uh, they think they've squeezed out um, all they can from this from this group or this particular reset and they have to shake up the snow globe again and start all over again but I think the the historical uh, playbook remains the same so it's uh, you know Hitler again and ancient Rome and uh, just the same stuff over again you know, Civil War, all this stuff. Uh, at one point, maybe five resets ago, it, it did happen. Maybe not. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure that's the script they run with. Just because when you, when you start to think of it that way, and you look back at the details of some of these events, well, right away, a lot of the architecture doesn't fit. I mean, it doesn't fit with the timeline that supposedly exists, like when you, you talk about the Native Americans uh, in North America, in that whole like Wild West era, uh, it's not it's not congruent with the architecture that's there, that's still there. I mean, some of this stuff is thousands of years old. I mean, you can tell, you, you can look at this stuff too, and you know, there's carbon dating and things, but um, none of us says regular citizens usually get to do that in a hands-on fashion so we just kind of take uh, what they they tell us as fact because it's in the books and it's in school and well you read it well everybody knows that like that that whole deal the everybody knows that deal well we all know that do we all know or did someone just tell you and then you to and someone told your parents and down the line it goes. And down the line it goes. So what I was getting at before was that this is the this is a specific point that we've kinda apparently we've never been at before. I don't know if that's what's causing this awakening as far as people beginning to realize what's actually happening. Um, I I theorize that their their system is breaking down from overuse. They've used it too many times. And it's coming apart. And that's why we're able to see through it. You know, they've they played this game. They've run this game too many times. So it's like been the same thing. And it, whatever they use, whatever the method of transmutation is, uh, with our energy turning into uh, taking it from us and using it for the things they want to use it for, whatever method that employees if it's like a spell or if um, it's a device you just don't know like I, I mean however they do that they've used it too many times and it's it's coming apart it's breaking down um, I was just thinking there if I had something to eat Did I get something to eat I'm kind of hungry hmm yeah I think I gotta go into ABC but the point is we're getting out of here things are good they're only going to get better um we're we've just been fooled we, we've been fooled for a very long time we've been we've been powering our own prison with our own energy for a very long time and that shit is is coming to an end and it's going to be uh 
blue skies after that. The blue skies here, kind of, with some gray clouds. Of course, uh, a very local light. Look at the way it's reflecting on the clouds. It's right there. It's not up there. It's not up here. If it was 93 million miles away with the kind of power that supposedly it has, it's giving off, the sky would be white. Well, we'd be, we'd fucking burn up. You know, all this stuff bullshit. Yeah, hang in there because it just gets better from here. Don't blame the teacher, blame the school.